Okay, so this one is going to be our first lesson on fundamentals too. We are going to start with the adult nursing. Fundamentals of nursing entails the entire process and what nursing compose, compose in terms of the responsibility and job duties which are assigned to nurses in, in terms of how they're supposed to take care of their patients and accord management skills and diagnosis of the virtue of the patient's illness. Here today, so this will be like part two and it will start with the respiratory system and it will highlight topics that have not been covered in part one and uh, the nursing process from the previous units have been used as this should be applied in patient care. So you see it involves the provisions of care to all individuals aged above 12 years of age. It forms the core of general nursing practice as a nurse. You must have cared for many adult patients that is of course. This now will give you an equip or you will, it will enable you with additional knowledge. It also hard your skills and attitudes to give better quality care to your patients. And so on this unit we are going to have the following section. First section on respiratory system that is of today. They shall also check on the section 2 that is circulatory system. Section 3 and genital urinary system and the integuments. And then the final section for palliative care. From wherever you are on the display, if you're watching over on YouTube, you'll see we have a frontal sinus, nasal cavity, an image diagrammatic showing the possible organ composition of respiratory system. That is from the sinuses, the cavity, the epiglottis, the two lungs, the right and left lungs, the primary bronchus, secondary bronchus, the diaphragm, the mediastinum, right, the sphenoidus, sinus, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, the laryngopharynx, and the esophagus. Now let's check away from this. So objective here we need to be able to describe the management of patients with respiratory disorders. Also expected to describe the management of patients with circulatory disorders, management of patients with genital urinary disorder, and management of patients or maybe conditions of the integuments and describe consider principal palliative. So let's start with the respiratory system first of all. Now we have the introduction basis and respiratory restoration is a very important body function. It ensures that the oxygen requires for the breakdown of materials delivered to the body tissues and waste like carbon dioxide is extracted. So this process we are going to check in this in a detail in this section. So that is that continuing with the same and if you're following the same. So we'll have the objectives in a very nutshell aperture. We have to describe the structure function of the respiratory system. We shall also be describing respiratory disorders and diseases. We shall as well utilize the nursing process in the management of adults with conditions affecting the respiratory system. So the structure and the function of the respiratory is the first thing. So the most important function of the respiratory system is to facilitate, facilitate intake of fire in the body, enabling the gaseous exchange and excretion of the waste gases. And the structure of the respiratory system will be divided into upper and lower airways, and you will start with the upper airways. So let's begin with the upper airways. So main thing, now when you talk about the respiratory components of the structure, we have upper airway and lower airway. So the job of the upper airway is to filter. Like here, yeah, of course, there are airs in your nose, that is what they do. Moisten. There is always mist and like moisturized epithelial layer within the lumen of those trunks, the, the guts and the, and the track which allow air to flow like in your nostrils, yeah. They are moistened, so they moisten the air. The blood circulation that on the veins and the vascularization system will warm air and in the body during respiration. So this is done through ma 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 the mucociliary reaction of cilia in the upper airway. And the upper part of the respiratory tract consists of the nose and the pharynx as well. So from whatever you can see um, from your end, the nose. Let's start with the nose. So you can see that image and the, how it's divided into various parts. Right, we have frontal sinus, nasal canal, cavity, epiglottis, the larynx, the trachea. Right, like that. So let's talk about nose. Nose has both the function of respiratory or respiration and olfaction. Olfaction in terms of to smell, that is the sense organ of smell. And then the respiratory function of the nose is to conditioning of the air through warming, filtering, and clearing and humidification. 
and then the nasal cavity is divided into by a septum and the cavity has a roof of lower lateral walls and a posterior wall followed by a posterior pharynx mucus secreting cell lining there are openings into the nasal cavity and the anterior nostril opens the nasal cavity while posterior nares open from the nasal cavity into the pharynx adjacent to the nasal cavity are air filled cavity located within the bony structure these are called sinuses sinuses ni vitu kama right there ni kama shimo shimo actually what what you need to know about the sinuses when you have sinusitis is like they have inflammation within those some of them are ending up being filled with the sinus fluid the main function of the air cavity is to reduce the weight of the bone which could be filled in those spaces and also enable your head to be light for you to control and it also helps also in vibration as you communicate those one also enable that sound you create it's it's a, it's a dy dynamic thing is a compo composition of a very major collaborating attributes so these are called sinuses and the main sinuses include the following we have the maxillary sinuses in the maxillary bone we have frontal sinuses in the frontal bone we have sphenoidal and ethmoidal sinuses in the respective bones so let's talk about pharynx we are done with the nose in the pharynx the tube that extends from the nose at the base of the skull to 6 to cervical vertebra and is 12 to 14 cm long so it is divided into the nasal pharynx the oral pharynx and the laryngopharynx and the eustachian tube from the ear empties into the nasal pharynx therefore infection from the ear can also involves it can also involve the pharynx so in this diagram you are able to see what i'm talking about this one here you can see there is division right so that is that so away from that there is a mass of lymphoid tissue within the pharynx called the tonsils the three groups of tonsils are the palatine tonsils the bilingual tonsils and the pharyngeal tonsils they also refer to as the adenoids normally i want to give you something when when you'll be in your outpatient department most babies suffer from adenoids and uh, they can surgically remove their conditions by drug but adenoids are those tissues or tonsils so if we have tonsillitis like presently in around the traverter there have been the condition has been so much and it can confuse you with the mumps in new baby i mean in 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 in, in baby that is under 5 so they are called adenoids so the function of the pharynx include i'm talking about the pharynx one the pharynx at the passage of your food it also enable you to test hearing protection through presence of lymphatic tissues again then warming and humidification of your it also help us during speech so that is that the tonsils filter bacteria what i said adenoids they filter bacteria from circulating lymph fluid and trap any particular they as the inhaled air passes through it so inflammation of the tonsil is referred to as the tonsillitis the other part of the upper airway is the larynx also known as the voice box so the larynx is a tube made up of the cartilage fibrous membrane and muscles its function is to produce sound So don't for, forget and confuse pharynx from larynx. Pharynx do not produce sound and pharynx are divided into nasal pharynx or pharynx and laryngeal pharynx. But now what produces the sound is now what we call the larynx which has got cartilage. So finally in the upper here where there is a triangular space between the vocal cords and the opening of the larynx called the glottis. So this glottis to have a clear picture of the structure and function of the drug please study the diagram on the left which you are seeing if you are using youtube over the lesson away from that let's check on the lower airway we are done with the upper say the upper is the nose the far in the larynx so the lower high airway we have the lower airway enables gases to take place so to mean that they are very direct with the tissues they are things to do with the trachea so refer to as the windpipe and extend from the larynx to the level of the fifth thoracic vertebra where it bifurcates into the left and the right bronchus so it's made up of the c shaped cartilages yeah which prevent it from collapsing thus affecting its function of air passage its functions include conditioning of the air uh, yeah warming and humidifying removing of particles and mucus through the ciliary function the cough reflex as well bronchus and bronchus the bronchus are divided into smaller branches that forming 
different lobes of the lungs. So they, 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 they further subdivide from the bronchioles and respiratory bronchioles. So their main function is to provide air passage and control of the amount of air passing through into the alveol conditioning of air is also maintained as it enters into the alveolar. So let's check about this alveolar you're talking about. So the alveolar is uh, the distal and the respiratory tract terminates the bind hand of alveolar ducts and alveolar which is a sac like structure where air interchange in takes place. So alveolar are always supplied with blood supply to allow the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide and then the surfactant factor is produced here as well which is important in maintaining the air sac open especially for infant. If, that's, if there is a delay in production of surfactant we are less, um, the risk of uh, the, uh, the, the ARDS, the respiratory distress syndrome, which is acute, or, the, or what we call the hyaline membrane disease. So let's talk about the lungs. The lungs are elastic organs made up of the conducting airways. So there are millions of gas exchanging called the acinae. And acinae is composed of respiratory bronchioles, alveol ducts, and alveoli. And this is where the gas exchange takes place. So the lungs are contained within the bony thoracic cage. And this comprises the ribs and the sternum, the clavicles, the spinal column, and the scapulae. And then in the pattern of what we've just discussed, which yeah, I mean, you will see in your first year, you realize one in 1.1 you are doing a locomotion. So below the lungs, there's a diaphragm, which also takes part in the process. Yeah, it takes place in the process of respiration. So the lungs are enclosed within an elastic membrane called the pleura. And the pleura has two parts. The one adjacent to the lung is called the visceral pleura. And other parietal pleura adjacent to the thorax cavity is called the parietal pleura. So in between the two is a space and the pleural space, which has a thin film of serous fluid. And so the respiratory tract is generally supplied by blood from the pulmonary and bronchial artery, oxygen diffusing to the blood in the capillary from where it is carried to the heart to be pumped to the other tissue. The pulmonary artery carries the oxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs for oxygenation, while the four pulmonary veins they carry oxygenated blood from the lungs to the heart for onward delivery of the rest of the body. The mechanism of respiration. That is what I need now to talk about. Under that, we're going to check on the respiratory scent in the brainstem controlling breathing. And this is stimulated by an increase in the acidity of the blood, the pH. Movement of air into and out of the lungs comprises the respiratory circle. This circle occurs about 15 times in a minute and consists of inspiration, expiration, and pause. So the pressure difference are created by these changes. Now, let's have a talk or uh, maybe a check on enter what we talk about here. So from your hand you're able to see the uh, yeah let's from your hand you're able to see what I'm displaying. Some of the structures with particular in the movement of the rock cavity to create the pressure difference include the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. So during respiration the lungs and the passage are never empty. Since exchange of gas takes place only across the velar ducts, the rest of the passage is called anatomically dead space. So let's talk about the tidal volume. Tidal volume is the amount of air that comes in and out of the lungs with each circle of respiration. It's normally about 500 ml. Then we have expiratory reserve volume, ERV, is the largest additional volume of air that can be forcibly expired after normal respiration is done. Around 100 and 1200 ml. 1000 and 1200 ml difference of 200 shillings only so inspiratory reserve volume that's another one for the inspiratory reserve volume is the largest addition of volume of air that can be forcibly it can be forcibly inspired after normal inspiration so that is that talk about 3330 mils residual volume is that air that cannot be forcibly expired from the lungs it is normally about 1200 mils Force expiratory volume, force expiratory volume is the volume of that can be forcibly exhaled within a specific time, normally one to three seconds. Then inspiratory capacity is the amount of air that can be inspired with the maximum effort. It, and it consists of the tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume. 
and then we have functional residual capacity the functional residual capacity is the amount of of air that remains in the air passages and over to the end of a quiet quiet inspiration and this prevents collapse of the alveolar during expiration so it comprises of expiratory reserve volume and the residual volume as well so we're going to check on the vital capacity but before we log on those i think we can proceed from here in the next available minute thank you so much and be blessed